I've tried all forms of art and nothing really satisfied me. When I was studying um, at L'Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Montreal, I was fascinated with the sculpture room. And then years later, when I picked a friend up at her class, her teacher, a famous Canadian sculptor, Stanley Lewis, looked at my hand and said I should be carving stone. That did it. I'm not real sure about any of this technical stuff. This machinery there. It took off a lot. So hopefully the stone is nice and smooth now and I'll be able to take a clean print. It's nice to have electrical tools, you know, but nothing beats my hammer and chisel. All the years of wanting to beat somebody up, you know, I couldn't do it because I was a girl. So now I have my hammer and I can do all the beating up I want to do. It took a long time to get to this stage and the most exciting thing for me to see is when I first apply the ink to my stone and the design comes out. Um, from the sketch to the carving all the way to the printing, it takes, it's a long time. That's the most exciting moment when I first see the, uh, the print. The claret cups are printed on a Thai mulberry paper. It's 100% kozo fiber, very delicate paper. And the um, yucca is a yucca bacata is on a Philippine salago. It's a tough paper, very difficult to print on, and I usually have to hand paint some of the areas that don't take. The chickadees are on a Japanese unrayo paper. It comes in a lot of different shades. The cranes are on a Thai garden meadow grass. My Native American speeches and um, my gorge is on the same paper. Yatsuo Moriki, it's a dyed Japanese paper. It comes in wonderful colors. All I wanted to do when I came to New Mexico was carve the Rio Grande Gorge. It was a, just a, an incredible pressure. I just had to do it and I had to find a piece of marble big enough, narrow enough that would hold it and I needed the right perspective. The Rio Grande Gorge, it's, it's a phenomenon. It's just miraculous. <laughs>